Let's see some of the features that came with uh, Curator 726. One interesting one is the capability of having Curator launch a particular script that may do some cleanup, may do some reporting, may do some whatever action you may want to do once a particular offense fires. And to actually do that, you go to the admin tab and here you have a section called custom actions. And in here, what you need to do is precisely specify, you know, the name, the description, and then what is it that you want to run, where the script file is and what type is it. It doesn't have to be a, a shell script. It can also be, you know, Perl, it can be Python. And you can specify a, a parameter that you pass at the moment that the offense is called when it's fixed and, and its value. Or you can actually select a network uh, event property that comes along with the event that the events that uh, fire the particular offense. Actually quite useful. Once you've done that, you, let's, let's assume that we have defined one of here. All you need to do is go into the offenses and I here already am at the rules section and when you add a new rule let's do it with an event rule and let's give this uh, a name name test and let's select uh, a condition just to get to the next screen uh, for example this one uh, and it's on the port and uh, let me add a port uh, 8080 whatever at the port submit and then when you go to the next page, you now have the option in here to select this checkbox, Execute Custom Action. And in here, you will find in this pull-down menu any of those custom actions with the you know the scripts that you define. So this offense trigger, that script gets executed. This can be quite helpful. Another thing that has been dramatically improved in 726 is the searches uh, from many aspects. One is the performance. The performance will increase from 7 to 5 up to 10 times. It's actually uh, pretty impressive. But also now, instead of doing, you know, a search, new search, you know, quick filter, as, as you probably have uh, done in the past and select the particular option that you want, you, you have a, a much better, easier uh, action to, to actually uh, select. So now, for example, in, in, in many of the fields, you can actually right click on a particular field and then you get a quick filter right from there, from that particular uh, the field that you have selected. And you can have some Booleans capabilities to actually uh, execute uh, the actual searches. Also, let's do uh, let's select a search here to show how easy, much easier it is to select the, the timestamp for the searches. Now you can actually select the, the start time, the date and time, and the end uh, time and, and, and date and time as well to actually do this from the GUI uh, in a much easier way. Also, in the advanced searches, you now have uh, a WHERE clause. You have the capability to do comparisons. Uh, you have some uh, things like uh, a, a, a additions like str post a string position will basically returns the position of a string inside of another string uh, you have regic replace which allows you to do an inline search where the criteria for the search is within a regex you have some statistical functions like uh, first instance on a column last instance of a column a standard deviation and stuff like that also Regarding the historical correlation, which is something very useful to play back events, that let's say that you receive some uh, logs in a batch mode and you want to run it with all the events that happened uh, way back, a couple of days ago, an hour ago, etc. Uh, or, or let's say that you create a new rule to detect an incident that happened on your environment and you want to test to make sure that that rule fires uh, without needing to have a new incident like that happening. So you actually can use this cortical correlation for that. Uh, but now uh, what we have in the historical correlation introduced in 725 is the capability to actually uh, delete uh, some uh, historical correlation that are long, long running. And you, uh, you can work with uh, disabled rules. Uh, you can see the history of the historical correlation. In, 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 so some enhancement into, into that regard. Also, regarding the dependencies, if you were to actually, 
let's say that you go into the s uh, searches and you uh, want to delete a particular search uh, or a particular event that you are actually uh, uh, working. If you were to actually delete the particular search and that search is being used on a, any other component, the, a dashboard uh, component or a, an unknown fence, etc., then this dependency framework will detect such dependency and will prevent you from shooting yourself on the foot and deleting something that you don't think it has been used, but it has been used someplace else. Another feature that is uh, important, especially in countries like Europe and uh, Australia and New Zealand where uh, privacy is actually very uh, you know, seriously considered, is the capability of actually adding here obfuscation for identity fields. So you can do things like, uh, I don't want a particular group of users to actually see the username that is uh, uh, on this particular event. So actually you can specify here the, the, the password and the keys that are going to be used to obfuscate to basically hash that parameter. So in the in the in any search uh, a regular user will see just basically a hash number or a hash value uh, while if you have uh, the right person have the, the keys you can actually de-obfuscate that and see that actual information more flexibility has been added into the uh, management of the multi-tenant now the uh, the and users of the tenant uh, of the actual tenant of the uh, of the environments so of the customer themselves they have now the capability of defining their own network hierarchy uh, they can define their own domains uh, they can you know manage the centralized credential for their for their scanners uh, things like that and speaking of scanners also in 726 no longer uh, the the VAs the, the the vulnerability manager scanners need to uh, run on the root anyway so now the tenants has uh, more flexibility uh, in, in what they can actually uh, manage continue to move away from the Java deployment editor and now all the things and more things are actually being put here on the uh, system and license management and you can actually even view the uh, graphic view the same thing that you see in risk manager with the topology you can see the the, the boxes that you have uh, set up on your uh, curator environment you can perform some administrative actions right from here like you start a, uh, adding a host uh, or you know restart a system or any one of those uh, actions in this extension management section uh, part of the of the admin here's where you define the applications uh, that you are adding like for example in, in a previous video I went extensively and talk about the app exchange and and I showed you know that I added this uh, incident overview from that exchange into my uh, demo environment um, and so I'm not going to go into into more uh, details on that that uh, the API has been greatly uh, uh, improved uh, and, and additions have been added uh, so for example uh, you now can have uh, data set uh, reference sets that are uh, read only and let me show you some of the things that have actually been added uh, into the this version 5 of the API Here we see that you know to support the custom actions that I described before there is an entry for for that in the in the API on the systems we have now an, a new endpoint uh, for us uh, for servers a new entry for uh, managing domains as well as for tenant management and here under the GUI all the support that is needed uh, for the for the, the new applications like the, the one we described in the previous video on the app exchange uh, examples of these can be found here at uh, github uh, let me actually bring this closer so we can zoom into the actual URL uh, you can see uh, examples of how to use the, these uh, APIs right there.